Sally. Thanks for stopping by. It's good to be able to sit down and talk about your request. Uh, George is here as your pass rep. And so we'll uh, we'll work through this together. Okay. I was wondering if you should be here. Thanks for coming. We're so sorry to hear about your mother's health. Absolutely. And uh, we know you want to move as soon as possible. Uh, we hate to lose you from the team, but to uh, understand your desire to be closer to her there in Dayton. Thanks. I really appreciate that. This has been a hard time for our family, and I'm just glad I can put in for an FA facility closer to her. Right, and I know you want to move as soon as possible, so I've already looked at your 3330-42 uh, and your resume. So we want to expedite things, and uh, we're going to uh, support you as much as we can. From our perspective, it looks like this is a good justification for a hardship case. Thank you. That's such a relief to hear. So, um, what's next in this process? Well, within seven days, um, I'll forward your uh, package to the district manager, Denise Wilson, and she and the uh, district pass rep will review that for a uh, determination at their level if it qualifies as a hardship under the new agreement. So what do they do that's any different than what you did? Alan, why don't we uh, sketch out on the whiteboard here uh, so she can see how the process works. Sure, that's great. Let's do that. Okay, the first uh, factor is personal circumstances. The new labor agreement breaks hardship down into three broad categories, health, parental care, and estranged family. Uh, health uh, includes uh, conditions for you, your spouse, or your child, and parental uh, care applies to either your parents or your spouse's parents. So the estranged family would be divorce-related situations where one parent moves a long distance away and the other parent is limited in their ability to see the children uh, due to distance. Um, the ages of the children and their health are also considered as part of that. Obviously, in your case, the issue is dependent parent care. Now, and part of the research you have to do on your own, like you did, uh, as far as positions uh, that you qualify for, would like to uh, have uh, facilities or cities uh, near you, where you want to be. Just so you know, if you are approved for a transfer, you can be placed at a position which is at or below your current career level. I'd obviously like to stay at my current level, but the important thing right now is to be near mom for her long-term care. Sure. And because cost is a factor, that's why we had you sign the statement that um, since the move is in your own interest, the agency can't cover any of the relocation costs. Yes, and we're perfectly fine with that. Okay. So, We'll take our package, the uh, application, and our recommendations and send it to the district level. That's just what I wanted to hear. Uh, so if the district manager and the pass rep um, decide that my situation qualifies for a hardship, um, what happens next? So they have seven days to um, forward their recommendations on to the hiring managers in Dayton. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they make a selection, if, they, if you're selected for the position, then we'll release you as soon as we can. All right. Well, thank you both for taking the time to show me this process, and I look forward to the next steps. Very good. Wish you the best. Thanks. Hardships, by definition, are hard on employees, and both the FAA and the union are committed to easing these burdens as much as possible. That's why the 2012 Past Collective Bargaining Agreement includes a process for hardship transfers. We want to help bargaining unit employees who are qualified to make life transitions as smoothly and as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, we can't approve all requests, but the agreement does address what happens in those instances. If an employee's request is denied at the local level, either because the situation isn't deemed a hardship or the proper documentation wasn't provided, the agency will explain the denial to the employee. Even if a request for hardship transfer wins local approval, it can still be denied at the district level. If the parties can't agree on the request, it is considered denied. But regardless of whether a hardship request is denied, the bargaining unit employee is still eligible to file an employee request for reassignment under normal procedures. If the FA can't accommodate a request because of staffing, we'll keep the hardship request active for 15 months and review it every six months. The agency will tell the employee each time it revisits the transfer request. Bargaining unit employees have the right to reject any alternative jobs that are offered during this process. Notes will be added to the file each time that occurs. Jobs will be awarded on a first-come, first-served basis if multiple hardship requests are received for a single vacancy. Any grievances arising from the hardship transfer process must be submitted in writing. Apart from hardship cases, bargaining unit employees can request reassignments outside the normal vacancy process. Let's take a look at how that works. Hey, Ben. Hey, Al. How you doing? Good. Good. How you doing? Good to see you. 
Ben was just here talking about a possible uh, request for reassignment. Yeah, answer. he was telling me about that. Okay, great. Well, as you know, I'm from Indiana. And um, I still have a lot of friends and family there, so I'd like to move to a facility where I can be closer to them. What would I need to do? Well, first, uh, you need to understand that if there's no current vacancy at the place, um, and if you were granted a relocation, uh, there wouldn't be any PCS funds available for that. That means the agency won't be paying for any moving expenses and such. I'm okay with that. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is fill out um, the form 3330-42. You'd write a cover letter that goes with that. Um, the t technical definition of that is filed in accordance with employee request for reassignment, or ERR. That's the way we talk about it. The letter would include uh, the position you're looking for, the facility, and the, uh, the office. Then add your resume to that and uh, either you know the big application, the OF612 or the SF171 to the package. So how long would I have to wait for that once it's been submitted? Well, your ERR request will stay active for 15 months, but you could be contacted at any point during that time frame and uh, to ask for a job. But understand your application won't get any special priority. I've got a friend at the facility where I'm thinking about moving uh, who might want to have my job here. I do a swap. You can do that. Huh? Yeah, it's yeah. called a, a mutual reassignment. And let's see. Um, subject to FA approval, your friend has to be in a comparable pay band and job series, and you have to be qualified for each other's jobs. That's all there is to it, really. <laughs> sure. Piece of cake. Yeah. I really like to make this happen. I really want to go home and uh, still want to work for the FAA, so I think I'll give it a whirl. Sure. Yeah, do that. Let us know if you have any other questions. Absolutely. Good luck. George Allen, thanks for all your help on this, and uh, yeah, I really want to make this happen. Okay, good. Now let's cover one more part of the labor agreement, Article 84, which deals with duty location of preference for airway transportation system specialists. The topic is priority bid status for internal vacancies that are at the same grade of the applicant or lower. Specifically, applicants with 10 or more years of service at the journey level at their job location get priority bid status for H-band jobs if they meet the qualifications. As part of their application, they should submit a cover letter that states that it is being filed in accordance with Article 84, Pass FAA ATO Agreement. So if the FAA selects a bargaining unit employee for a job based on priority status, that employee's current facility must either let him make the move within six months or assign a specific date acceptable to the employee. Management also still reserves the right to fill vacancies from any appropriate source. And that's about all there is to it. Yeah. We did good, didn't we? Yes, we did.